No, I find it funny as we approach this whole entire thing with the presidential election and all these American problems that start to come in as we move forward in this world. <laughs> it's about how you have a lot of these places such as Chicago, New York City, and then a couple other places around the country, primarily them two that I usually see in the news a lot, about how they have this persistent migrant problem that starts to take shape in these cities and stuff like that. You know, even to the point that even politicians, primarily mayors and governors, is calling out for the U.S. government to do something. And it's so odd because Biden, I haven't really seen, made any words on it. Kamala Harris is more focused on taking over the position of Biden. If Biden gets too senile or he's not able to fulfill his duty as a president. Now, with that being said, it's a lot of different roles that I can take into why I think that is. It's not just because of the fact that she's vice president. There's also something more symbolic to the idea about her wanting to become president. But that's a story for another day. The point is, is that when understanding this migrant crisis, maybe I did or maybe I didn't say on this channel, especially when you have to deal with these American policies and why they decide to have a lot of these migrants come to the states first is because a lot of these states need to big up their GDP. And in fact, no matter that they have to recover financially from Karina. That's just a thesis of mine. But one of the things I wanted to talk about today is, you know, we're going to be shifting our focus into one of the things that I wanted to analyze about this migrant crisis and about how famous cities like New York City can't even hold on to their bet and even trying to re redact off of a migrant law that they put out in the 1980s, which has to give quote unquote refugees or immigrants shelter or a place to live if they decide to come to the city to do whatever it is that they have to do. And I mean, we understand this. Obviously, uh, places like New York City is renowned for having migrants or immigrants build the city itself, such as other cities. But that's just, again, it's a story for a different day. So I'm going to show you this video, peep. Fair use. Another migrant shelter is set to open in Queens. This in anticipation of more buses expected to arrive in the city. Fox Lives Morgan Mackay joins us now in the studio. And Morgan, when can we expect to see these buses? Stephen and Tasha, six new buses with migrants will be arriving at some point later today as more than 110,000 migrants have arrived in New York City since last spring. The Adams administration once again calling for changes to a policy that requires the city to provide shelter to migrants. And that's a future video that I'm going to be doing in which we're going to try to explore migrant laws, especially from the 1980s, because if you really do find it, a lot of these laws was pretty much helping out the immigrants that was coming from, like, let's say, Cuba and in a couple of other countries around the world where, you know, they wanted to help out. And especially if you do the history on it, uh, laws that came from World War II in which they wanted to help out different citizens from around the world during that time. But to get back to the story, I mean, it's, again, pretty funny how you see these different things happen when in four, they was all for it. But when they get a lot of it that happens, they can't deal with it. And in my opinion, in my honest opinion, migrants serve as the breeding ground for, I'm just going to say, the marshal that may come, come in the future when it comes to these quote unquote camps. And what you'll start to see in a lot of these cities, these tents that's being set up adequate shelter and food and stuff like that but at the same time trying to give preferential treatment to the migrants instead of the natives that live in the city something to touch on later in this video there's a wide open front door right now for more than a year the city has scrambled to feed clothe and even educate more than 110,000 migrants who have passed through new york city since the spring of 2022 Nearly 60,000 migrants are currently in the city's care, and around 19,000 migrant children are headed to city schools this week. The Adams administration argues that the right to shelter policy, which requires a city to provide housing to anyone who needs it, is putting the city in an impossible situation. This policy is currently being debated in court. You're going to get. Well, the thing about it is this I mean, I understand when it comes to the political 
affiliations, the political, you know, the things that's on the docket, the things that serves as the policies that happen in these cities. The funny thing that I find it about these migrant crises is that it's not like they can rightfully refuse these immigrants to come into the country. But then it's just like, well, if you know this is a problem, uh, can you really refuse them? Can you tell them, like, listen, we can't have more of these buses coming in the city. We have a problem and outright tell them, do not drive your buses into Chicago, New York City and stuff like that. And, and the funny thing you have to realize with this migrant crisis, again, is what is this going to do when it comes to the affordability crisis that a lot of these cities face, especially when it comes to real estate and especially how someone like Mr. Eric Adams himself really thinks it's a good idea to take all these old office buildings that's empty and decrepit and then try to turn them into apartment buildings and tell them that I would charge you $2,000 or more to live in them. Makes no sense. A hotel room, you're going to get school, school, open arms. And while we love that and we are so proud of that, I think in a way it's being used against us. If we didn't have the right to shelter, I think we would still get people, but I think that it would be a little less. The city is now opening its 16th large scale humanitarian relief center for migrants at a stale place in Long Island City. The city is still working on getting this building up to code, but more than 300 migrants will be moving in on Wednesday while construction will continue on the lower floors. The yeah, funny thing about it is, is that, again, they have no problem putting a lot of these different things out there for the migrants and, again, giving them preferential treatment. But within that being said, we do understand the little schemes that they do with these real estate places and practices, like have these empty apartments and empty lot houses or whatever you want to call it. And a lot of these people that probably invested money into these places is getting paid. But the average let's just say New Yorker that's looking for apartment is going to encounter problems and be in all these lottery listings and having to wait years on in where instead a migrant can come to the city fresh off the bus and be able to get some type of a housing that's luxurious probably, or even to the fact of the matter, it's average to the point that they're able to have their essential needs met versus a native that lives in a city for a long time and is looking for a reason to leave the place that they're living in and want to still be in the city, but obviously is looking for something that they can actually afford. It's just the funny games that they play with these whole entire migrant situations and having these makeshift offices where they're just sitting up there saying, oh yeah, you know, they should be able to come too, but then shit on your own native uh, people that's been living in the city before them. It's the funniest thing in the world. And then trying to do things like convert schools, such as the thing that happened in Staten Island. And then sit up there and talk about, oh, yeah, you know, we're just going to do this behind uh, people's back, which creates the NIMBY effect. Not in my backyard, which a lot of protest comes into play because they're not going to allow that to happen, especially if it has to deal with children or other people that's around them that they care about. It's a funny story. At full capacity, Ostel Place will be able to serve nearly 1,000 people. Governor Kathy Hochul is still resisting calls from city officials to force upstate counties to house migrants. Certain communities like Staten Island are also protesting migrants moving into their area. Republicans like House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and former Vice President Mike Pence have jumped on the situation, saying that Mayor Eric Adams is right in protesting the federal government's response to the migrant crisis. Adams responded with, I'm hearing those who coming out saying Eric is right, Eric is right, but don't pick half of what you say I'm right on. Pick the other half, that Trump Republicans created this mess, and we need to fix this mess with real immigration reform. Well, you know, I find it funny. It's like the, the <laughs> Mr. Eric Adams himself sits up there, says it's the Trump Republican or whatever it is, that a third, to slander this whole entire thing of saying it was a particular political party that's responsible for these migrant mess. When at the same time, we've already seen Biden was highly responsible for the fact of the matter this these whole entire situations taking place. Wasn't in a conversation back in 2016, 2017 about close the border and about how many people got mad that even Trump did not want more of these immigrants coming in. I mean, it's funny, but then like Biden and Kamala Harris, who usually is a no show, no thought in these type of things, because their whole entire focus is obviously creating a Trojan horse in places like Uganda and then being able to still fight this crazy ass war with Russia and Ukraine and being a Ukraine ally. And every year still creating all these different things like 
uh, 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 guns and more of these military tanks and all these different things because they quote unquote care for Ukraine. Saw smoking mirrors. At the end of the day, we have an understanding. It's about the resources that's in Ukraine, not because they want to help Ukraine against Russia. Getting the whole entire thing with bricks. But let's move on with this. One of the type of things that we have to understand before we end off this conversation is certain people may not understand what what is necessary to have a conversation, which is sanctuary cities, which is the number one thing on why we have this conversation today about immigrants. So let's go over it. And I'll put this this article in uh, my description. What are sanctuary cities and why do they exist? This is an article from July 12, 2021. To combat closed borders, detention, and deportation, communities across the country are proclaiming sanctuary city status. Sanctuary cities exist from coast to coast and promote the ideals of human rights, separation of local and federal law, and the empowerment of communities to grow with the help of immigrants. Cities that pursue sanctuary city policies do so for various reasons, all of which relate on some level to human rights and community growth. What are sanctuary cities? The phrase sanctuary city is not a legal term, but one developed over time and more recently reflecting a response to ICE, U.S. Immigration and Custom Enforcement, Policies and Actions. In general, a sanctuary city is a community with a policy, written or, or written, that discourages local law enforcement from reporting the immigration status of individuals unless it involves investigation of a serious crime. These sanctuary communities go beyond city, cities, though. One can find entire countries and states declaring sanctuary status. These communities typically do not honor requests by ICE to detain undocumented immigrants who local agents apprehend for misdemeanor crimes or investigations. Many in sanctuary cities also refuse to deputize their local officers as federal agents, a necessary technicality if those local officers carry out the duties of ICE agents. There is no specific federal law against sanctuary city policies. Now, this is the interesting point that a lot of people have to find. And usually I think most of the time you're going to find a lot of these sanctuary states or sanctuary cities are usually leaning towards democratic cities or democratic led states, cities, whatever have you, very liberal in their practice. Lists of sanctuary states in the United States Sometimes the term sanctuary encompasses more than just a city. There are many counties across the United States that claim sanctuary county policies and several states that consider their entire geographical location as a sanctuary. As of March 2021, the following states claim sanctuary status. California, Colorado, Connecticut, Illinois, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Oregon, Vermont, Washington. In addition, some of these sanctuary states also designate counties to have policies in place that discourage or prohibit cooperation between local law and federal agents when dealing with undocumented immigrants. What does a sanctuary city policy really do? In terms of immigration issues, sanctuary cities, city policies are often designed to respond to a series of events involving undocument, undocumented individuals. The following is an example of such a series of events and how the sanctuary policies apply. Initial contact with law enforcement. This is often something relatively common, such as an officer pulling over a car for speeding or responding to a domestic incident. The initial contact has nothing to do with citizenship status. Law enforcement detains an individual. Law enforcement books and takes fingerprints of the individual at the local or county jail. Per protocol, these fingerprints go through the FBI database. ICE regulations require the state and federal agents share information regarding inmates. ICE gets involved. If ICE records show the individual is undocumented, ICE sends a request to the local jail to detain the individual for an additional 48 hours beyond the original release day and time. The time buffer allows ICE to seek a warrant and begin the deportation process. Local authorities react. According to the United U.S. Department of Homeland Security, local officers do not have to comply with ICE requests for additional detention because doing so is a violation of the Fourth Amendment. 
The reaction of the local authorities depends on any sanctuary policies in place. Cities and counties with sanctuary policies typically decline the request and release the individual once the appropriate time for the initial contact has been met. This might be because of charges dropped, bail set and met, or no jail time sentenced. Some sanctuary cities will reject all detained requests they receive from ICE, while others comply under certain circumstances, including gang involvement, prior felony records, or terrorist watch list status. Cities without sanctuary policies often comply with ICE and detain the individual while ICE seeks a warrant for deportation. The undocumented individual might remain in the local jail during the deportation process or ICE might transfer that person to a federal prison. Jails and prisons that detain undocumented immigrants often receive federal funds on doing so. And that's why I'll end the article here. If you want to read more about it, I'll put it in the description again. But um, just to have this conversation, how crazy this stuff is getting, and especially ahead the presidential election, who uh, those may inaugurate to be the next president of the United States, the 47th one, <laughs> just an honest one to see. But just adding this all in, America for itself, basically uh, buy enough more than they can chew. And how funny they will do all these different things to accommodate these ones that's coming in the border, what they would deem illegally, but not caring to do so against their own practice or against their own laws. Otherwise, not give me your thoughts in the comment section. Remember to like, share, subscribe. Peace.